Hello and welcome back to our series on electrical and computer engineering. Our conversation tonight is about circuit solutions. To solve a circuit is to find for every element in a circuit what is the voltage, what is the current, and what is the power. To do that, we will use only three grammar rules of ECT, which are Ohm's law, KVL, and KCL. And you may be thinking, if that is all it takes, we already know that. Why do you need to teach us anything else? Well, if we try to use Ohm's law, KVL and KCL without a proper plan, we may and probably will run into trouble. That's why scientists have been coming up with organized ways of using those three laws since the 19th century. Back then, they came up with loop analysis and then a little bit later with nodal analysis, with branch currents methods, with consents methods, and more recently Dr. Ho and his team on the second half of the 20th century came with a wonderful solution, what I call the Lord of the Rings of electric circuits methods. One method to rule them all, one method to solve all the possible circuits, modified nodal analysis, MNA. That is the method we will be studying in this session. Interested? Let's begin. To solve a circuit, yeah? That's our goal, to solve a circuit. But what does it mean to solve a circuit? To solve a circuit is to find every voltage, every current, and every power in every element in a circuit. To solve a circuit, we always use a combination of Ohm's law, KVL, and KCL. And then you're thinking, what about uh, nodal analysis, loop analysis, branch currents methods, and all the others? Well, you know what? They are organized recipes of how to use Ohm's law, KVL, and KCL to find actually the solution of a circuit. That's what they are. These sort of recipes have been coming up since the 19th century, like the branch currents methods and loop analysis, and they were pretty good for the very small and very simple DC resistive circuits of the time. However, soon enough it became evident that something more powerful was necessary, and some very smart researchers came up with nodal analysis. Sometimes one is better, sometimes it's the other one, depending on the nature and the topology of the circuit. However, of all of those, my favorite one is nodal analysis, and I'll tell you why. Because we're solving for nodal voltages, and nodal voltages are physical parameters. They have physicality. We can go to the laboratory, and using a voltmeter, I plug in the black probe into my chosen node of reference, and then with a the red probe, I go touching each one of the nodes and getting a readout uh, that gives me the node of voltage of every node. I cannot do that with loop analysis. And why? Because loop analysis solves for imaginary currents, loop currents. And if you're thinking, well, the currents in the outside loops are physical, yeah, but you still have to cut open uh, one of those branches and insert an ammeter in between to measure them, which is a pain. That's why I prefer nodal analysis. For very large networks, only nodal analysis will go the extra mile. That is why, at the end of the 20th century, Dr. Ho and his team, they figured out a way to improve nodal analysis so that it could deal with any possible topology thrown at it. It is one method to solve all circuits, one method to rule out all the other ones, modified nodal analysis. That's the one we will start studying tonight. Before we begin, let's start with some nomenclature, or as it's pronounced in the States, nomenclature. What is nomenclature? It is just a collection of words used in science, in technology, or by an individual to describe his activity. Let's begin with controlling variable, which is a name we'll use a lot. What is a controlling variable? In that case, what do you see there? You say, well, that's a source. That is a voltage source. That is a controlled uh, voltage source. That is a current controlled voltage source. That is a CCVS. Fine. But who or what is controlling that source? 
you think about that for a little while and realize that IX is controlling that source. IX is deciding what is the value of that voltage source. IX is a controlling variable. What about in this case? Who is a controlling variable there? Immediately you realize VY is a controlling variable. And in this case, IM is a controlling variable. And here, VX is a controlling variable. You know what? Controlling variables are unknowns that we need to solve for. And because of that, we're going to need one extra equation for every controlling variable. We will call them control equations, CTL equations. More nomenclature, more names, evil currents. What are evil currents? Are the currents in evil branches and they are unknown, like that one over there? The currents in evil branches are unknown. We call those evil currents. We need to solve for them. We will need an equation for each one of them. We call them evil currents and we label them like that. I sub E A, that is evil A, evil B, evil C, etc. We will need an evil equation for each one of the evil currents, of course. The evil equation is the corresponding KVL equation of the source as we saw in the previous video. This one. V of the positive node, in this case Vm, is the V of the negative node Vk plus the value of the source, whatever value it has. At this stage, the first take of MNA, the solution method goes like this. First, choose a reference node. Second, choose the directions for the currents in every R and RV branch, as long as they are not controlling currents or there are no controlling voltages involved, of course. Label every true node, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Identify, draw and label every evil current. Locate and count every controlling variable. For every true node, we'll have a KCL equation. For every evil branch, we will have an evil, a KVL equation. And for every controlling variable, we will have a CTL, a control equation. We begin with the nodes. Choose and label your reference node. Even a binary node could be if you want to, right? Label every other true node, 1, 2, 3, etc. The voltage in each one of those true nodes with respect to the reference is going to be an unknown, V1, V2, V3. And then we deal with current. Choose the direction of the current in every RV or R branch. It's arbitrary. Well, except, of course, if there is a control current or a control voltage in that branch. The directions for the currents in I and RI branches is given by the source, of course. In evil branches, choose the evil current flowing in either direction. Personally, I prefer, out of discipline, always to draw them going from minus to plus. Unless, of course, that evil current is also a control current. And what are the unknowns we need to solve for? Every controlling variable is an unknown. We're going to need an equation for each one. Every evil current is an unknown. Every node voltage is an unknown. We will need equations to solve for all of those unknowns, right? Yes, one per unknown. And we begin like that. One control equation for every controlling current or voltage. One evil equation for every evil branch. One KCL equation for every true node, but never for the reference. And you're thinking, well, I know what a KCL equation is. I know what an evil equation is. It's a KVL. V plus is equal to V minus plus the value of the source in the evil branch. But what are those CTL equations? Well, we write each controlling variable as a function of node voltages V1, V2, etc., and of all the evil currents, I, evil A, evil B, etc. Those are controlling equations, CTL equations. And we are ready. Tutorial time. Let's solve that circuit. The first thing I'm going to do is choose a reference. I can choose any node, even a binary node as my reference, in the future, we will realize that some nodes are better suited to be chosen as a reference. But just to make my point, I'm going to choose arbitrarily my reference here. That's my reference. Next, 
label every node. Sure, node 1, node 2, and node 3. Mark branch currents directions. Sure, this one, that one, and this one. The evil current, all right? From minus to plus, just because I like it that way. You can draw it the other way if you want to. Why did I draw this current here on the 5 ohm resistor flowing from left to right? Because I was given no option. You see there is a controlling variable, Vy, that has that polarity. That's already suggesting that the current flows from high to low, from the left to the right. And why didn't you draw a current direction in the branch at the bottom? Because that has a current source. That direction is already chosen for me by the current source. And the same is true for this branch on the top right corner of the circuit. How many control variables? Identify and count your control variables. Here is one, Ix. You see it controls the V source in the center. And Vy, it controls this current source on the right. So we're going to need two CTL equations, right? How many evil branches? This one. So we're going to need one evil equation. Now we know that we will have two CTL equations, one evil equation, and three KCL equations. One for each node, but never for the reference. Let's write those equations. First, the CTL uh, for a Vy. We need to write Vy as a function of node voltages and evil currents, if necessary, right? So who is Vy? Look at the circuit down here and you realize that Vy is the voltage in that 5 ohm resistor. That voltage is just V3 minus V ref, right? But V ref is zero, so that is just V3. Sweet equation. CTL1 is Vy equals to V3. Gotta love it. Now CTL2. CTL2 is writing Ix, the other controlling variable, as a function of node voltages and evil equation. Here it is, Ix, this, Ix. Ix equals to 1. Ix happens to be the current in an RV branch, and we already know what is the current in an RV branch. It's given by this expression, the current in an RV branch from an origin, in this case node 2, to a destination node 1 is voltage of the origin, V2, minus voltage of the destination, V1, minus the value of the source, 3 volts, because it's opposing the direction of the current. Here it is. V2 minus V1 minus 3 divided by 2. Okay, okay. There it is. We have written Vy and Ix in terms of node voltages. And if necessary, of evil currents. It wasn't necessary. Now we go for the evil equation. And we know what an evil equation is. It is V plus is V minus plus the value of the source. For this evil branch here, V plus is V3 and V minus is V1. And the value of the source is 5. So that equation is V3 is V1 plus 5. And there is your evil equation. We're left with the three KCL equations, right? One for node 1, 2, and 3, but never for the reference node. Never. Let's go with KCL1. How many currents entering node 1? And you say only one, only the one on the top. This current is entering node 1, and two currents are leaving from that one. So we're going to write that one current on the left entering the node, that is only Ix, and leaving we have Ie, and we have this current. What current is this? Well, this is an Ri branch, and the current is given by the source, 7 amps. Just 7. Now KCL for node 2, node 2. Currents entering node 2. Hmm, only the ones from the left. And that current is from an RI branch, so that current is just given by the current source. What's the value? 2VY. So that is the current entering node 2, 2VY from the left. And leaving it, IX and this current. Well, IX and the current here. This vertical current is the current in an RV branch. And that is, let's review that. In an RV branch, Voltage of the origin of the current, in this case, would be V2. Minus voltage of the destination of the current, that would be V3. Minus the value of the opposing uh, current, uh, of the opposing voltage source, this one, that would be minus 3Ix, divided by the resistance 4 ohms. And there is your second KCL equation. Now, for no 3, help me out. Currents entering its 2, this one, i.e., and the one from the vertical top um, branch that we just saw. We have them. And leaving 
only this one. So Karen centering IE from the left plus uh, the one from the top. We already had that copy and paste equals to the current living through this branch. That is again an R branch. And that current is voltage of the origin V3 minus voltage of the destination V reference zero divided by five. There you go. You have six equations and six unknowns. Let's check what unknowns. This one, Vy, that one, Ix. This one, the evil Karen IE. And V1, V2, and V3. Six equations, six unknown. And if you're saying, holy cow, will I have to solve those equations in an exam? Don't be. You're not a student of a class of 1950 something when you had to do all those things by hand. No. I given all of you access to an emulator of the powerful HP 50G, or some of you may be as adventurous as buying that on Amazon.com. I believe it's only 80 something dollars, right? So it's a cheap calculator and very powerful. But if you're in my class, you already have it. So that's how we're going to solve that system of equations. We enter each one of the equations. And if you don't know how to do that, go to the other playlist in this very same channel the one on HP 50G that teaches you from how to set up the calculator all the way into using the calculator for solving Laplace transform problems and plotting that and whatnot. But right now, we want to enter those equations. So the equations are Vy is V3, Ix is V2 minus V1 minus 3 over 2, etc., 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 and etc. We enter all of those equations and we ask the calculator solve for it and we have the values for all the six unknowns the six unknowns these days students are so used to seeing that plethora that abundance that cornucopia of digits coming out of the screens of the computers that they write ridiculous stuff like that please don't do that right think resistors have plus or minus five percent of, of correctness in the values they have a tolerance capacitors worse inductors even worse so do you think that it has any meaning one of the third digits from left to right anymore think again in the classroom your ta will require in my classroom to write at least four significant digits for grading purposes and that is fine but when you are out of my classroom please consider writing only the three most significant ones so let's see what we have here the value of the controlling variable vy is 3.9 volts, this one. And this controlling current IX is 11 amps, fine. And the evil current down here, 4 amps, uh-huh. And uh, V1, this node's actually below the reference node chosen, 1 volt below. Well, V2, this one is really, really high above the reference, 24 volts. And V3 is only 3.9 volts above the reference. So you see, that is how we solve a circuit using MNA Take One. If you're adventurous, I invite you to use your HP 50G emulator that you downloaded in the previous video and probably have learned to use using the videos in the other playlist and solve that circuit and tell me each one of the values of voltages and currents in it. It is the same circuit, yeah, but with different numbers. In the next video, we will explore how to write CTL equations in great detail. So stay tuned. And with that, we're done.